So when it comes to core leadership, um, I, I, I believe that there's, there's ways that you can fix poor leadership. Um, because if you think about it, I firmly believe that everybody, every, employees come to work with a sincere desire, generally speaking, a sincere desire to do a good job. They, they, they aren't coming there, coming to work with a desire to not do well. And uh, of course, there's some exceptions and you deal with the exceptions uh, as you would. But um, that being said, most want to do a good job and that is true of the leaders also. So leaders, when they're there, they're trying to do a good job, but for some reason, for some reason, it just is not connecting, is not working in, in some circumstances. And, and there's a lot of ways that this is, this is perceived and a lot of ways it's described. You can wind up calling it micromanaging when the leader is just overly saying too much about what needs to be done and how it needs to be done um, or uh, 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 not communicating well, um, controlling knowledge, uh, com controlling information, I should say, within the company and using that to, to uh, uh, maintain control or, or a leader who s does not stay above the point of power and, and is, and is uh, assessing blame for situations on, on the employees instead of taking ownership of the situation. Really, what are those all come down to when you boil it down to the, the root cause is communication. If, if the leader is trying to do a good job and if the employee is trying to do a good job and some, for some reason, neither one of them are seeing the good job that is being done, it comes down to communication. But that being said, that's not a simple topic. So let's talk about communication. Communication um, for a company has a lot of different levels. So if you look at it from a strategic level the, of communication, um, then what, what, is, what is the strategy? What is the long-term vision of your company? If you don't know what the long-term vision is, if the owner doesn't know it, if the leader or the supervisor, if they don't know what that long-term vision is, there is absolutely no way they can communicate it. If they haven't spelled it out, um, they may think that, well, yeah, I want my business to do this in five years, but if they haven't spelled it out, they're not going to communicate it. And if they don't communicate that, then the people who are working for that, that leader um, won't have any idea. They won't have the tools they need in order to achieve that vision, that mission, um, and get the company to where it needs to go. Um, if you're looking, so that's a strategic level. Below that, you have operational level. So a little bit of history on myself. I have a long time in the military. So I, I like using things like uh, terms like strategic, operational, tactical, um, but they have very good meanings. The strategic level is really the long-term where you're going. The operational is, okay, how, does, how do the operations of the business consistently perform the same and improve year after year? Um, so, from an operational level, if you haven't built a culture in the company, if, you, if the leader hasn't established what the culture of the company is going to be, then the leader can't communicate that culture. And guess what? If, if that, that culture has not been communicated, then you're going to have people who don't fit whatever culture the leader might want. And so he's not, he or she's not going to communicate very well or maybe they're making their, the employees are making their own culture because nature abhors a vacuum. If a culture has not been defined, then, a, then somebody else will define the culture. It is inevitable. It will happen. So, so operationally speaking, defining that culture is absolutely critical and then communicating that culture, making sure everybody is on board with that culture. Why is why is the culture important to the leader? Why is it important to, to, to the employees who, who are the, the people who are fulfilling the needs of the business? Um, why is the culture important to the, the, the customers and the clients? Okay, if, if, the, if the culture of the company is not um, empowering and attractive to the clients, then it's not going to bring value to the clients. And if it doesn't bring value, then, well, the, the company is going to fail on an operational level. So, so 
so the, the communications really begin at the strategic level, looking at the destination of where you're going. They continue at the operational level. Where, how are we, how are we operating in our business long-term, um, day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year? How are we improving? What are we, what steps are we taking? Then we get to the tactical level. This is where it's really all about what people do and how they do them, okay? How a person does their job. And, and, and a lot of people say, ah, my boss micromanages me. What, what does that mean though? What does micromanage mean? T- it, it means that one, one, the employee is really trying to do a good job. So if the employee is saying, you're micromanaging me, get out of my way, I want to do a good job. That's not a bad thing for the employee to say that. They're trying to do a good job. So what has to happen is at a tactical level, the business owner, the leader in the business, the supervisors, the management, we need, we need to wind up creating a position description for, the, for people. Okay. Before that, really an organizational chart. And that's the kind of the the cross section between operational down to tactical. The organizational chart defines the all the all the roles and positions in the company. It's it's role-based. So now we create positional contracts or positional position descriptions for each person. The reason we do that is so that the people know what their job is. If they don't know what their job is, then they won't be able to do their job. And ultimately the supervisors or leaders are going to have to micromanage them because they're not doing the job the way that the, the supervisors want it done. So the, the, the way to stop micromanagement and to help the employee who raises their hand and says, hey, I want to do a good job, how do I do it? Create a position description, okay? So that tells them what their job is now let's help them the next step and say, how do you make your job better? Because we always want to improve. We always want our businesses to improve. If you're not improving, if you're not growing, then, then the business is going to die. So, so we create the KPIs, key, uh, key performance indicators. These are the ways that an employee uh, can understand exactly not only if they're doing a good job, but how to do a better job. And, and I, I promise you when, you, when you look at position descriptions and KPIs, if, if you have a, a person in a, a position who doesn't have a position description, if you have them write down the top 10 tasks that they think are most important for them to do, and you have the supervisor write down the top 10 tasks that he or she thinks is most important for the employee to do, the two lists will not match. If you, if you, however, if you have both people write down those tasks and then have a discussion about it and, and work out what the priorities are, what tasks are the most important and what tasks have to be done at, at the exclusion of all others and what tasks are the, the fillers in between times. And, and, and really some of those fillers should be things like professional development. How do I learn to be better at my job? Okay write down those and then have the discussion on, on what, what is most important and then together make that into the position description, then everybody has buy-in into it. And then you can write the KPIs and do the same thing. What, what, what do you think should be measured? What do I think should be measured? And how will get that get, to, get us to our next goals, okay? Do that, have the buy-in. And now the employee who is raising their hand before saying, I'm being micromanaged, um, please stop that. Basically, the employee is saying, hey, I want to do a good job. Now the employee knows how to do a good job and is empowered to do that good job. And the supervisor is no longer needed to wind up going in there saying, no, 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 do it this way. No, 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 do it this way. Okay. So strategically, communication, and it is, it is done through the strategic level documents, your, your vision and your mission. Um, Operationally, communication, culture documents, know who your business is, how you want your business to interact with the world and how the world should interact with your business. Write it down and communicate it. And then tactically, work with the employees on a day-to-day basis using 
agreed upon documents. Um, and those documents can be living documents, they can be modified, uh, uh, positional descriptions and key performance indicators so that they can they know when they're doing a good job and how to do a better job. Communication is all about leadership. 